Hey, welcome to this quick animation breakdown. This video is intended to demonstrate how you can go about creating an impactful attack animation. This character here was fully rigged and animated in Godot, however, what I'll be showing you applies to any other game engine as well. My attack animation is set to 0.42 seconds or just 14 frames. And the animation starts in the resting pose, then slowly leading into a charge up where the character leans back. And by 0.1 seconds into the animation, he's already fully leaned back, after which the animation is quickly move forwards and the character leans forwards with his staff growing in size to give more impact before eventually returning back to the starting pose. So if you play this quickly, you'll see you kind of miss all of these frames in the middle because they happen so quickly that I can barely catch it, however it does occur. So I think one of the most important parts of this animation that you might notice when I play it fast is that there is this explosion appears behind following the weapon, which is my weapon's attack swing uh, sprite, which is a separate sprite which has its visibility turned off by default in every scene. However, in most software you'll be able to add a keyframe which toggles this visibility. So much like you would add a keyframe for your position of an arm or bone, whatever it may be, you can also toggle the visibility. So for example, over here, you can check the visibility inside of your inspector. Over here, visibility on, you can see that the, the tick is off at this point. However, at this frame over here, well, it should turn on when it crosses this keyframe. Besides the large attack swing, which I've shown you over here, I also have a small attack swing. It's currently out of position, but in its keyframe, you can notice that this smaller attack swing only plays towards the end of the swing itself. And once that has crossed, it will turn off. So the idea is that at first the large attack plays, followed by the small attack swing so that it gives the appearance of this shrinking. And this is just a trick that you can use uh, for creating some simple visual effects when you don't really have the resources to create a more complex swing visual effect. Another important thing to mention is that you should always aim to exaggerate your poses as much as possible. So here the staff grows in size, even though this is unrealistic for the game. It enlarges, which gives it more impact the eye really squishes, the character kind of floats forwards. These are all things that skew with your perception of how the animation plays and generally make it seem better. Finally, I guess I should say that my animation ends at 0.42 seconds, at which point it returns back to the original state so that it can create a looping effect, which we can then play and just loop over and over. This may not be the case for you, and you might want to end the animation at um, an attack swing position, or perhaps blend it into two animations. However, the main idea of this video is that just for you to understand that you can get away with adding simple PNGs as visual effects uh, and give the illusion that there's actually a, a swing uh, tracker happening behind you. If you'd like to learn more about how to create these kind of animations inside of Godot, uh, you can follow this YouTube channel, subscribe and watch my series on creating a 2D character. Thanks for watching.